And you know what? Professionals think that's becoming a serious problem. On your sides, Lauren Johnson has our story. It's a computer. It's a walking computer. This is Elizabeth Horn. She's a PhD in LCPC is my alphabet soup. It means licensed therapist. These little computers she's talking about are our phones. It's okay to try and be connected to others via the phone. I mean, it's supposed to enhance our lives. It, it can. But Horn also believes overusing phones is affecting how people develop relationships. Their real goal is to, is to find connections and that kind of thing. So they end up having the opposite effect, creating, again, more of a sense of isolation. So how much is too much? Every day at work, I call, email, and text the people I'm interviewing. Then I use GPS to get from place to place. When I'm there, I'm taking pictures with my phone, and then I'm tweeting them back to Idaho on your side and Facebooking. If I didn't have my phone at work, I might really, oh, hello? Oh, oh, hey there. Panic? That's exactly what I would do without my phone at work, and Horn says that's not a good sign. But what else? You or I might not have our cell phone and think, oh, what am I missing? The person who's a truly addicted would be experiencing such discomfort that they would feel completely out of control. Horn says low self-worth can be a trigger. Getting text messages or emails and that kind of thing, there's an immediate sense of, gosh, somebody cares about me. I must be worthwhile. She tells me it's okay to leave work and put my phone away. Sending emails and texts later into the night, there, that kind of hyper-responsibility can also be masking a sense of, oh, maybe I'm not good enough. I should be doing more. What if somebody finds out that I'm not as good as they may think? But it's not just working professionals. Horn's biggest concern, how cell phones are affecting teens and college students, who she says can be on their phones up to 10 hours each day. We're forgetting how to communicate one-on-one -on -one with real-life people. Horn encourages parents to stay involved. But you also need to know what they're doing on their phones, have a sense of, of how long they're on their phones, and make sure that there's that balance of having real life interactions as well. Lauren Johnson, Idaho on your side. <laughs> wow. Well, a recent study from Baylor University says 60% of students surveyed admitted that they might be addicted to their phones. And that same survey showed male students spent an average of eight hours a day on their phones. Females, wow. 10 hours a day, up to. Really? Hmm. Uh, you know, for me, I'm trying to hold off as long as I can getting my kids the cell phone. I know it can really come in handy at an earlier age, but yeah, the, the longer I can put it off, the better. It's a difficult decision for parents. It can be. Thanks. Well,